In today's video, we're going to get people mad. All jokes aside, before the video rolls, by the way, this was on stream at twitch.tv slash beaver that you can go follow, stream daily, smile, link in the description. Okay, so the video is going to begin, and I just wanted to point out that this is going to be a raid tier list based on when the raid came out, launching day one, whether it had, you know, bugs or some weird mechanic, things like that, overall enjoyment, you know, the day one experience. For example, I'm sure nobody's going to be surprised to know that Last Wish is obviously going to be S tier, duh. But other than that, I did at the end put uh, my personal thoughts as a tier list also. So just keep that in mind. First, it's going to just be the experience. And then at the end, if you care to see how I feel about each raid like today, I guess, then I have that at the end. That's it. Tier list. Enjoy. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know, blah, blah, blah. Sales pitch. All right. Catch you in the next video. Goodbye. We are going to do a Destiny raid tier list. The only rule would be I'd probably rate them based on which game they were in. So, like, if a raid was in D1, that's what I'm going to base it off of. Because I see there's two Atheons here, so... Or two Vaults. Uh, I'm going to assume this is D1 Vault. I believe this is... This is Wrath, right? I think this is Wrath. Alright, uh, Wrath... We're going to start off with... I'm trying to think of this logically and not, like, think biased. So, like, I'm trying to not include my own personal experience. Uh, I think I'm going to go with A. And the reason I'm going to go with A for Raph is because while the raid is very fun and, like, a, a, a fan favorite, and the mechanics are really good and interesting, and visually it's very sound, and the music is good, the one... Really annoying glaring thing this raid had was when it launched, which is what this list is going to be based off of, is the raid was so incredibly easy because we beat the crap out of it by being overleveled going into the raid. So, like, the raid was, what was it, like, th uh, something 70, whatever we were in D1, 370 or whatever, and we already went in there and we could already be that light level to match the raid. So that soured it a little bit, which is why I put it at A instead of S. Otherwise, if the raid launch was good, I'd put it in S. They're definitely bringing back Wrath next. They're not bringing back Crota. There's no shot, in my opinion. We have like 18 variants of Crota in the game already. I don't think, uh, I don't think we're getting that. M maybe I don't know. Maybe they'll turn it into a strike, I or a dungeon. I, I doubt it. We'll see. All right. Next up is Eater of Worlds. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with C for Eater. I think the opening is one of the most boring things I've ever played in my life. It, it might be the most boring encounter we've ever had in a raid. Period. To open the raid. Crown, I think, is better than that. Which is probably the one thing people are gonna compare it to. But, the second half of the raid is really fun. And for its time, it was pretty creative. And was like one of the more fun bosses we had in the game. Remember Curse of Osiris? Yeah, that was a train wreck. So like the the second half, good, really good. The first half is... So I think I'm going to put it at C. Next is DSC. So Deepstone... Let's try to give this... Uh, fair, 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 fair. Where, where would fair be? I'm going to give this a B tier. Deepstone launch, again, just like Wrath, the launch suffered, well, not exactly because of light level, because there's contest. However, the raid launched with no snipers, which there were supposed to be snipers in the raid. And the AI in the raid, I swear to God, and I don't kid when I say this, was like patrol dregs. Like, no joke. There's a, I'm sure somebody knows the Datto clipboard. Datto is trying to wipe so he can restart the encounter on day one. And the Vandals just stand there looking at him menacingly for like 30 seconds. So the AI was not it day one. But visually, it was fucking amazing. Deep Stone Lullabies in the raid. What else can I say about that? Um, Storyline-wise, cool. Atrax was cool. Tanix. 
not a new boss, but the Roomba memes, I don't know, I guess. So it's not like the best thing in the world, but at least it was a fun raid. So I'm going to give it a, a B tier. I think B tier is fair. Up next, let's see, Crown. You know, I Okay, so I was going to put it in B because the opening similar to uh, Eater is pretty slow. And... But... The mechanics for Crown was were really, really fun. Like for Golron Phase 1 and 2, I really enjoyed that. Uh, it was the first contest raid, I believe, if I remember correctly. So it, it was like, a, you know, the first of its kind, or iteration, I guess, of its kind. The boss was cool. It was, technically it was supposed to be a raid lair, but I think it was pretty fun to be considered a full-fledged raid in the end. So I'm going to give it a solid A tier. At worst, I, I would put it in B tier because of the slow opening. But other than the slow opening, I think it was pretty fun. Fine, let's do D1 Vogue first. Alright, D1 Vogue. This is probably going to be controversial. Because people are going to be like, what are you talking about? The rate's terrible. Uh, I'm going to put it in S tier. Simply because it is the first raid ever. And launched the first of anything involving raids in any game ever on console. It was insane when it first launched. People loved it. It's the reason why Destiny survived on vanilla Destiny 1 launch. Like, it was the peak of Endgame. And then from here, it spawned a bunch of wannabes. You know, Division raids. I think Anthem was going to try to have a raid. Call of Duty is trying to have a raid. You know? It's been, what... Eight years, still going. So, I, I I can't, like, logically give this anything lower than an S, because it's just, it. this is where it all began. I think that's a pretty fair assumption, but some people are going to probably hate that. Okay, Vow, I... Th it's not going to be S tier, I already know that. Vow's definitely not S tier. I think I'm going to have to give it a B tier. And the reason for that is, one... The the launch was uh, scuffed as hell because of the error codes. Uh, and two, because something like Caretaker was technically like gate kept or health kept, whatever. So you kind of had to uh, go multi-phase on it. This is before everybody knew like, oh, just, just edge him towards uh, the health bar and then just nuke him. So everybody thought it was going to be a three-phase. And then uh, on the flip side, Rolk was obviously great on contest it was something new for once it wasn't just like a giant target that stands there and you just snipe him to death so that was pretty cool so i think a b tier is pretty solid if there weren't a bunch of error codes and shit at launch i'd probably put it in a tier fine i'll, I'll put it at c tier i like i just i don't like the raid at all it's visually fine to look at but outside of visuals i just find it so like unimaginative and boring it's it's gambit the raid it's atheon atheon's like weird cousin as the final boss the harpy boss looks cool but the mechanics to the harpy boss is gambit which uh i have enough of gambit playing gambit so i'm just gonna put it at c tier otherwise i would have put it at f because i just don't like the raid this is probably going to trigger some people too especially like levy speedrunners but uh, I'm going to put Levy at C tier. Levy had the least amount of boss encounters we've ever had in a raid. That's already a minus. Uh, I enjoyed Pleasure Gardens. That's the only encounter I enjoyed. Like, Baths was okay. Like, it was fine. I understood it, and it made sense. It wasn't, like, super complicated or ridiculous. Uh, Gauntlet, I didn't like. Because it's just, like, running the same race three times. I don't know. Like, the, shooting the symbols to get your team across and taking turns from each other is cool. But just, like, rotating in a circle over and over and over can only be so fun. Outside of, like, the first time you do it. And then Callus, Hmm. Like, Callus was okay, but the music was not good, in my opinion. I didn't like the Callus music. And then, you know, it's D2 Vanilla Launch. So it was, what is it, like double primary era? So really all you had was like rockets to shoot. 
the Nightmare Realm was cool, but the, the main throne room wasn't uh, anything special. So, like, I, maybe I like half the raid at best. And I don't think it's anything special outside of that. So, I think I'm just going to give it a C tier. Maybe you could push for, like, a B tier. But, I don't know. I feel like it's a solid C, personally. Pleasure Gardens is glamorized Gorgons. I mean, yes and no. Like, it allowed you to get rewarded uh, if you played stealthily. Stealthily? Stealthy? The, the stealth aspect actually mattered. Whereas in Gorgons, you had to be stealthy and then you just leave. And if you fought them, it just got progressively worse and worse and worse. But in Pleasure Gardens, if you were just running around and not getting caught, you could build stacks. And then, we, and then you could fight the uh, the Gorgons, the, the War Beasts. And then you can kill them and get rewarded because you build a bunch of stacks. Moving on. Uh, this is Spire Stars. Spire... S. I don't even have to think about it. Spire is like the epitome of what we should have had as the first like raid in D2 to begin with. It's actually super difficult. You actually need to communicate with your team. You can't just like solo carry an entire fire team through the raid. Uh, the boss is not a joke. The boss is actually uh, lethal. So if you don't pay attention, he will kill you. He does not give a F. The only thing that was bad about this raid was the reward system, because it was technically a raid layer, and they just threw a, like a sidearm and a fusion rifle at you, which was lame. But mechanically, visually, difficulty-wise, this was like the best raid we had up to date, up to this point. And it, like raids should be this, honestly. Just like raids these days, uh, start with contest, but except you want to keep contest. Or, I mean, like, as a difficulty option, not forever. Like, have normal and contest, or normal master contest. Well, one of those. Last wish. Uh, it, do I even need to explain it? Like, come on, bro. The best raid, literally, to ever exist in the franchise. Probably never gonna have this experience ever again. This is what truly was S-tier. I don't think anybody can say it's anything lower than an S, honestly. You are smoking crack if you think this is lower than an S. Yeah, if there was an S++, uh, Riven would be it. Last wish, 100%. Alright, Oryx, Kingswall, D1, right? Yeah. So, D1, Oryx... Kind of weird doing this after D2 Oryx came out, but... So again, I'm going to base this off of when it came out. I'm still going to rank it an S. Because the only the only problem I think people had with D1 King's Fall was only Oryx being a, a bomb boss instead of a health bar boss. So people hated that you needed to go through four phases or five phases to actually kill him. But outside of that, the raid was literally perfect. It had a ton of bosses. It was difficult. It was it broke your back day one. Uh, visually, it was sick. the The music for the raid was sick. You actually felt like you accomplished something when you beat the raid, even after day one. It was pretty difficult. And also, the, the first uh, I guess the first true final boss or final raid boss that was soloed by uh, a few people. Myself included, I'm just saying. D1 King's Fall was too easy. Everyone soloed it. What? And yes, they should buff Adept Raids in... Um, or Adept Weapons in Master Raids somehow. Because they're... They're worse than crafted weapons, which makes no sense. King's Fall was the first to have a final stand. Yeah. King Saul was the first to have a final stand. Crota was the first to have an Enrage, I guess. Like, a, a built-in Enraged. You can get Enraged on Atheon, but Crota was, like, built-in. Like, you had to go into the Enrage mode when he was, like, 5% health or whatever, if I remember correctly. You meant Oryx? I mean, dude, like... Like, 30 people in the world sold Oryx out of millions of people that played D1. I would not say that's easy. By comparison, like, 
I don't know, hundreds, thousands of people sold Crota. It's not even like a comparison. I want to be generous, but at the same time, like I, I think I gotta put Crota in D. Actually, hmm, I'll put it in C. So the raid has so many problems, dude. The raid launched, and it was difficult, which is good. But then outside of that, outside of difficulty, there were so many issues. Like, okay, so difficulty was good. The weapons were good. The armor looked cool. But then you had so many terrible things. You had, um, obviously it was super short, like extremely short by, by Vogue standards. Um, you had the whole Ethernet cord pull thing, you know, on the boss. That was not a, uh, that was not a great look. And then you had cheeses for the entire raid, left and right, like you're handing out pancakes. Like, the Abyss section had a cheese. The bridge had a cheese. The the Death Singer had a cheese. Uh, Crota, well... I guess, if you don't count the Ethernet cord, it, there wasn't really a cheese for Crota. He was just, like, really, very easily low manable. But, um... I can't, I can't say the raid isn't fun. Like, it's a fun raid to do. But it had so many issues with it at launch that I feel like I can't put it higher than a C. Okay, uh, next is Scourge of the Past. I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a B. I think, I think I liked Scourge as, like, a raid. I enjoyed the final boss. The loot was cool. They introduced some new mechanics like sparrows in during a raid, which was not the norm at all at the time. Obviously, anarchy is huge, like literally one of the best weapons we ever had. But for me to say the raid race day one was even close to decent is just a joke. Because we had um, people getting DDoSed left and right by assholes. Because back then we didn't have... Um, you know, DDoS protection. Uh, then we had the whole uh, revive glitch where your fire team could revive forever for an unlimited amount of time and you wouldn't wipe. So that literally ruined the race entirely. And then we were overleveled. Like, we were so overleveled, it was a fucking joke. We were so overleveled, I went into the first encounter and the yellow bar that you have to, you have to stun from the front and the back and... and uh, kill that way was like a normal enemy to me like i just shot him with like one shot of heavy boom he's dead like bro Th this raid was probably the reason why contest was even invented in the in the first place king's fall d2 literally better than king's fall in d1 in pretty much every way and probably like the the what's the what's the term like the gold standard for what a raid should be. A bunch of bosses, super fun encounters, super engaging, no, like, stand on this plate for 16 hours, you have to at least kill stuff when you do stand on a plate, and tons of bosses. Sign me up. Every raid. Do it. Just like that. Alright, and then, I guess this is what? Vog D2? Vog D2, I will say... I'll say it's a solid B. It improved a lot on what D1 Vog was, which was <laughs> uh, complex as anybody. I like Templar. I like Atheon. I like the redesign they did with uh, Gatekeeper. They made complexes um, faster to complete, which was cool. Uh, the, the Wyverns being added was a nice touch. D1 Vog, by comparison, was a snooze fest, sure. But it was the first ever raid, so I can't really, like logically say it was bad without this being like a smash hit who the fuck knows if any of these even exist after that so uh, yeah i think i would rate these the way they are right here i like i kept thinking do i want to put any of these in d or f but really like bungie does not make terrible raids there's some raids that are obviously disliked more than others but even the raids that I don't particularly like, like, for example, Garden, Garden, uh... There's people out there that obviously like Garden. 
And I'm talking about real people, not people who net limited the raid, like a bunch of losers. So, like, I don't think any of these raids are bad by any means. It just happens that there are some that are, like, leagues better at S tier. And others that are in C tier. But I don't think any of them belong in F. At least not yet. And hopefully there never will be an F tier raid. Now, do it based on opinions. Okay. Like, if we're, if we're talking about, like, how I actually feel about the raids now, this is probably how I would rate it. Maybe even put Leviathan on C. It's like I said, like, some people out there will like a certain raid, even if I don't. Some people will like Garden, some people will like Leviathan. I'm not gonna say uh, Garden is F. Like, I don't like the raid, but to say it's F would, would like, uh, signify basically it's a terrible experience overall it's broken it doesn't work it's trash which i mean, it isn't like true i don't like it but it's not that so this is what i would rate it if it was just my opinion only and not like including day one launches and implications and all that stuff so that's what i would put last wish both king's fall spire s tier uh you could even argue wrath was s tier except for the over leveling Crown, A tier. Deepstone, Vow, Vog, Scourge, B tier. Eater, Crota, D1, Vog, Leviathan, C tier, and then Garden, D tier.